Spawn on the dunes of the Baja 1000, this F-150 Charmander evolved to an unstoppable off-road Charizard. When it came to hauling, crawling, and all-terrain brawling, this truck is quite... The clever girl. This is our 150th episode of Up to Speed, and what better to celebrate? What better way? This is our 150th episode of Up to Speed, and what better way to celebrate 150 than with Ford's ultimate dinosaur truck? This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Ford Raptor! If you didn't know, I'm a huge bookworm. I love reading because it makes me smarter and my lady thinks I'm sexy when I read. Audible's great when you wanna read, but you also gotta do other stuff. I just pop in my little earbuds and listen to Michelle Obama's new audiobook or Diddy's new audiobook, Honor Yourself. I like listening to stuff that pumps me up, but those titles are not for you. There are hundreds of thousands of others to choose from. But the problem with traditional reading is you can't do it while you're sleeping. But now, thanks to Audible Sleep, I can drift off in a sound bath with Sarah Oster or meditate with my boy, Diddy. Honestly, that sounds very relaxing to me. So if you'd like to lose yourself in the musings of wordsmiths like Diddy, head over to audible.com slash up to speed or text up to speed to 500 500. That's audible.com slash up to speed or text up to speed to 500 dash 500. So they know that we sent you support the companies that support donut so we can keep making all this cool stuff for you guys for free. Everybody loves the Raptor. I'm talking Ford fanboys. I'm talking truck enthusiasts, dune donkeys, hillside honchos, literally everyone. My mom loves this truck. It is an icon amongst a long line of Ford F-150s, AKA the best-selling vehicle in Le Estados Unidos since 1977. Some of you might know that the Raptor has the roots in Baja 1000, but did you know that under its reptilian skin, it's got some shocking ancestry? That's right, I'm talking about the Ford SVT. Lightning, 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 lightning. Jeez, watch where you're aiming that thing, Thor. Chapter one, the great American truck storm. It all started in 1990, five years before Post Malone was born when Chevy came out with the 454 SS. They built it on the same platform as your grandpappy's Chevy 1500, except this sleeper will get grandpappy freaking heart attack. The 454 SS came with, you guessed it, a 454 cubic inch V8 making 380 pound feet of stump ripping twerks and 230 buff Hersey's. <laughs> A year later, Chevy bumped up the power baby to 255 and the Turks to 405. It had freaking Bilstein shocks. It had a blacked out grill to make it look all mean like Darth Vader and a fancy red bow tie. Like if Darth Vader was going to a fancy cocktail party. And honestly guys, this thing is so tight. That it's making me sick. No, you're making me. You're making me. Stop it. I can't. The Chevy 454 SS kicked off the amazing muscle truck trend, and a year later, GMC debutted the Cyclone with S. This bad ass sports truck was a low profile all wheel drive Sonoma featuring a 4.3 liter turbocharged V6 making 280 hertz per 14 pounds of boost on tap. Sure, it only had a 500 pound payload and it couldn't tow like a normal truck, but who cares about towing when you're beating Ferraris? Yes, this truck beat Ferrari's car and driver race, a GMC Cyclone with an S against a Ferrari 348 and the Cyclone with an S smoked them. And it quickly became the fastest production truck in the world. Back at the Ford Motor Company, they were watching Chevy and GMC have all this performance fun and they figured having a halo truck of their own could only boost their lineup. That's spoiler alert, little hint, little foreshadowing. And that's when Ford picked up the phone. They were like, 
SVT? Yeah, it's me, Papa Ford. Look, I think it's time that we polish up the old oval. And SVT is just like, uh, I think I got a couple of ideas. Yeah! So, in 1992, three years before Post Malone was born, Ford's special vehicle team debutted the first SVT cars at the Chicago Auto Show. People were drooling over the SVT Cobra and Cobra R, both built from the Fox Body Mustang. But the bell of the dang ball was the SVT Lightning! <laughs> Described as a Mustang GT with a cargo bed, this upgraded F-150 came with a high output, 5.8 liter V8 stomping out 230 hertzpers. It borrowed its cast iron cylinder heads from the GT40, had big old squirters and even dual exhaust. The SVT Lightning marked Ford's first step into the high performance truck market. And if Ford didn't make the Lightning, we would have never gotten the Raptor. Now, there is going to be an entire episode of Up to Speed on the Ford Lightning coming very soon. So we're just gonna fast forward a little bit. But before we do that, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss the Lightning episode because uh, it's gonna be sick. Fast forward to the early 2000s. Ford was getting ready to launch the 11th gen F-150 and with it, SVT would develop an all new Lightning, which was easier said than done. I mean, the Ford SVT Lightning was at one point the fastest production truck in the world. So the pressure was on. Chapter two, Ford's big problem. Unveiled at the 2003 Detroit Auto Show, this buff looking horse had 22 inch wheels, a sleek low roof line, and a whole lot of vents. While everyone on the floor was buzzing with excitement behind the scenes, Ford and SVT had a bit of a problem. The 11th gen F-150 was a big old boy. The engine, the brakes, the tires, they were bigger than ever and it didn't make sense from a performance perspective. I mean, think about it, sports cars, are small for a reason. There was no way that this new concept would ever perform like the previous SVT Lightning. Then, chief engineer of SVT, Jamal Hamidi, had a little light bulb go off. King. Instead of trying to shoehorn a sports car into a truck, why not just amplify the truck's DNA? And we all know what is in Ford's DNA. I'm talking about the Baja 1000, baby. A grueling off-road race that's been going since the 60s. Everything from motorcycles to buggies to big old boss hoss trophy trucks try their best just to finish. And Ford's been racing it since the very first year. Ford Motor Company and Baja Racing go together like an episode of Up to Speed and that guy who keeps asking for an episode of Up to Speed about my dad. You can't have one without the other. So with this new direction, SVT was going to ditch the Lightning's sports car aspirations and harken back to Ford's rich off-road history. Little did they know they were about to create the OEM performance off-road truck market. Chapter 3, A Dino in the Dunes. The SEMA convention of 2008 showcased a bunch of very 2008 cars. The Pontiac Solstice Jixp, a whole bunch of Hummer H3 builds, and a smart Batmobile. It was a weird time, okay? It's when I came of age. But just like in 1992, Ford once again had the bell of the damn ball, dubbed the SVT Raptor. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's how Raptors talk. Their all new truck was almost eight inches wider than the stock F-150 and came with big old hot boy fender flares. It was painted a striking molten orange like a freaking magma volcano that ate all the dinosaurs. Ford did away with the classic blue oval and instead went with a big old F-O-R-D across the grill. The hood even had vents that kind of looked like raptor scales. Uh, actually, uh, dinosaurs were a lot more similar to birds than lizards. A bird? 
That doesn't sound very scary. The SVT Raptor came with 35 inch wheels, which were massive compared to the Lightning. Its base engine made 390 ponies, but the thing about the Raptor is, they like to hunt in pairs. That's right, Ford had a second Raptor and they called it the Raptor R, R for racing. This mostly stock race version had a modified 6.2 liter V8 tuned to make 500 snarling horsepower. Not only did Ford debut two Raptors at the 2008 SEMA show, they also announced that the Raptor R would be leaving the Vegas stage to go directly to the Baja 1000. That is freaking insane. Yeah, they had won eight out of nine championships the year before, and now they were entering a new factory vehicle in one of the most grueling off-road races ever. Ford publicly put their reputation on the line, but their goal wasn't to win another championship. Their goal was to simply cross the finish line and show the world that the SVT Raptor was the ultimate performance truck. 24 hours before the start of the 2008 Baja 1000, Ford's Raptor team arrived down in Mexico. They probably visited La Bufadora, Spanish for the blowhole, a beautiful natural wonder outside of Ensenada where water has blown hundreds of feet into the air. After sightseeing, they decided to give the Raptor R a test run. The new truck took to the sand like a pro until the engine died. Guys okay? No. That's right, 24 hours before the big race, they spent all night wrenching, and before they knew it, the sun was rising. The team was getting ready to pack up, and Ford's reputation was gonna suffer, but then... The Raptor R's supercharged 6.2 liter V8 roared to life! One of the team members touched the truck with tears in his eyes and said, Life finds a way. Driver Steve Olegaze piloted the Raptor R to a great start. They drove it aggressively for hours on end without any issues through steep, rough terrain and flew 100 miles per hour over a dry lake bed in the middle of the night. 99, 100. The other Class 8 trucks were dropping like wimpy little puny flies. And after 25 hours, 28 minutes, and 10 seconds, the Raptor team crossed the finish line. They came in third place out of nine teams. And when you consider out of those nine teams, only four made it to the finish line, I think you can say, Mission freaking accomplished, guys. Ford had proved that their SVT Raptor could drive you to work on weekdays and tear the frick out of the dunes on weekends. But in the end, would people even care? Chapter four, a Jurassic truck. Two years after their Baja finished, the Ford SVT Raptor was released to the public and in just 12 months, that's a year for all my math boys. You got nothing gets past you guys. You're smart. Raptor sales topped 10,000 trucks. That's nearly as much as the first gen Lightning did in its entire production run. Safe to say, People freaking love dinosaur trucks. Based on the 12th gen F-150, you could get it as a two-door super cab or a four-door super crew. It came in tuxedo black, Oxford white, blue flame, and who could forget that iconic molten orange. Lava is the second coolest thing in nature. First year options featured a 6.2 liter Triton V8 making 411 prehistoric ponies and a smaller 5.4 liter V8, but that option went extinct by the next year. Because let's be honest, you guys, you don't get a high performance vehicle to get the small engine option. The tippity top tier Raptor sold for 41 grand, which was about 50K in 2020 money. And honestly, that's a pretty fair price for an SVT developed, Baja proven, four wheel drive street legal performance truck don't get me wrong 50k it's a lot of money it's a lot of money but most top tier luxury trucks today get up into like six figures when you think about it like that the raptor really is a great value oh! Just to let you know how badass this truck is, the SVT Raptor is electronically limited to 100 miles per hour when off-roading. 100 miles per hour off-road. That means that it can go over 100 miles off-road if they didn't limit it. That sounds really fun and really, really scary. <laughs> With the launch of the 13th gen F-150, we also got the second gen Raptor, this time dropping the SVT name entirely and was badged simply 
as the Ford Raptor. It looked more futuristic than ever with cool headlights and an even more pronounced grille. The updated dyno featured a 10-speed auto and upgraded all-wheel drive system, long travel Fox shocks, and a roaring twin turbocharged 3.5 liter 24 valve high output EcoBoost V6. Easily one of the best production engines in recent history. I freaking love these things. I want to put one in a, in a Mustang. The Raptor's new lightweight aluminum body was 500 pounds lighter than the first gen. And when paired with the EcoBoost 450 Hertzpers and massive 510 pound feet of torques, this truck friggin' rips. If you make a million dollars per episode like me and you want superficial upgrades, Roush Performance is outfitting select Raptors with some added perks. For $17,000, they'll put on red wheels, decals, and embroidered leather seats, or you could take that 17 grand and buy a second truck, like any of the trucks from this episode of The D-List. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. Check it out after this video. And if you don't have that kind of Roush Raptor money, Ford's got your freaking back. They're offering a smaller truck with performance similar to the full-size Raptor, and it's called the Ranger Raptor. That's right, the original Ford Ranger is coming back, baby. I love this truck with an all new Raptor package. Ford, I know you're watching because you guys watch all the stuff. Please, let me have one for a year. I'll return it just a little scuffed up. <laughs> Ford absolutely knocked it out of the Jurassic freaking park with the Raptor and proved that come hell or high dune, they're gonna make a sick, affordable performance truck. It's amazing that trucks like this still exist because sadly, too many cool things die out before people appreciate them. Announcing the all new, all buff, buff, Horses t-shirt available at donutmedia.com. We collabed with the legendary graffiti artist, Mr. Totem of the Black Cloud Battalion to bring you the buffest, sickest shirt that the world has ever seen. And they're available right now, right now for sale on donutmedia.com. Be the first on your block to rep the buff horses. Let everyone know that puny horses just won't cut it. You only need the buffest, beefiest boys with just pure sinewy muscle. Buff Horses shirt, donutmedia.com. Go get yours today. Guys, this is the 150th episode of Up to Speed. When we started doing this, what, three years ago now? I had no idea that we'd still be making this fun show every week. And I gotta say, I it's my favorite thing to do and I'm so grateful that you guys watch it. We're doing it, uh, we're still here and I'm, I'm just so proud of the people I've met doing Donut Media and, and what Donut Media has become. And it is entirely for you guys and because of you guys. This community is awesome. I love seeing our Reddit. Uh, I love all the memes that you guys make. This really is bigger and better and cooler than anything I could have imagined. And uh, I just wanna thank you guys so, so, so much. I love you.